My name's Ross, and I'm a poet and writer who lives in Aberdour in Fife. And today we're going to be writing some poetry about nature. And this video is going to be full of helpful hints and tips about how to write a poem about nature. This is my favourite place in the whole world. This is my veg patch. And I've got potatoes and some onions growing. But that's not what I love most about my veg patch. What I love most about my veg patch is mud. I've loved mud since I was a little boy. In fact, I've written a poem about it. Our teacher asks us, what is your favourite thing about being outside? I like the park with the extra big slide, says Susie. Faiza says football and Jerome says trees. Isla loves the seaside and Janice bumblebees. One by one we list off things that are mostly sport and nature. Ian, who's quite clever, says the Lambert Fisher Glacier. Then it's my turn and I say mud and my teacher says mud and my class says mud. So I say mud again and I nod my head. The teacher scratches hers and asks for another choice instead. But I say, I don't need another choice. I love mud. And my teacher says, why? So I tell her, mud is amazing. Did you know hippopotamuses, elephants and the water buffalo all cover themselves in mud to protect their skin? It keeps them cool and stops the sunlight getting in. Some frogs, snails and worms use it as a home. Some insects leave their babies in there until they're fully grown. Mud is full of nutrients that feed your favourite plants and flowers. Of course they need sunlight and the occasional rainy showers. But it's the mud that they put their roots in that will really help them thrive. If your mud isn't right for them, they really won't survive. I could go on and on, but I think I've said enough to prove that mud is actually pretty awesome stuff. My teacher folds her arms and says, Okay, but you're not a worm, a frog or a hippopotamus. So why do you love mud more than a lot of us? That's easy, I say. Mud is is squelchy and yucky and mucky and icky, it's sludgy and slodgy and slushy and sticky, it's ploppy and plippy and sloppy and slippy, I love it in dollops, I love it in bath, I love mud pies and muddy little paths, I like to stick my hands in it and break up all the clumps, I like to make it splash with muddy puddle jumps, I love mud! Now it's your turn to write a poem about something you love in the outside world. Sometimes it can be hard to think of something straight away. And that is okay because it's easy to get some new ideas. All you have to do is go for a walk. And when you're on your walk, try to notice all the things around you. You can look at things close or far away. Try to notice all the different colours, unusual shapes and textures. Try to stand still for a moment and listen. See what you can hear. Can you hear traffic or birds or any other animals? Can you hear people? What about smells? Can you smell anything? Okay, well, once you're back from your walk, it's time to get to work. Grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. And now what I want you to do is list out all the different things that you experienced on the walk. Was there sounds or objects or views that you experienced? Was there things that you heard, things that you saw, or things that you smell or even touched? Write them all down, okay? Pause the video and write them all down and then when you're ready press play again and I'll get to the next bit. Oh good, you came back. I'm glad. Okay, have a little look at your list. There should be a lot of things on it. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is pick one of them that is your favourite. What is the favourite thing that you have about your walk? Was there an object or a sound or a view that you particularly enjoyed? Close your eyes for a moment and try to remember what it was like when you experienced that moment on your walk. What did you feel like? Were you cold or were you hot? 
Were you having a conversation or were you silently watching something? Was there colours? Was there noises? Try and remember as much detail as you can. And then, when you're ready, open your eyes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you in a second to pause the video again and you're going to write down as many words as you can to describe the thing that you're picturing in your head, okay, to describe that memory. And what I want you to do is try to use vivid words, okay, try to use words that will really help you imagine it and will really help people who might read your poem imagine the same picture too. Think of words that are really rich and evocative. Okay, pause the video and when you're ready, press play again. Brilliant! You should have a good list of words now. And if you are an artist painting a picture, you might pick out all the colours that you're going to use and have them ready before you start painting. That's called an artist's palette. Well, this list of words is just like that. This is your palette. These words are like your paint and your poem is like the picture that you're going to paint with them. So try to use the words that are fun or really help someone get the picture in their head. Now it's time to use those words to write your poem. When I wrote my poem, I thought of a little scene in my head that allowed me to describe mud. My scene was a teacher asking me what was my favourite thing about being outside. You can use that idea if you want, or you can use a different scene from your own imagination. Perhaps it could be that you want to tell your friend about this exciting thing you discovered, or that you want to take an animal on a walk to your favourite spot. Or maybe the poem is, is just about the walk that you just had. Or maybe you could write it from someone else's point of view. If your favourite thing is a tree, maybe you could write it as if you're a bird flying towards the tree or a monster hiding underneath it. Use your imagination, it's really up to you. My poem rhymed, but poems don't have to rhyme. It's all just about having fun with the words you have. Okay, so give it a go now and try and write a poem. It doesn't need to be long, using the words you have about the memory you have. Press pause, and then when you're ready, press play again. Brilliant! You have just written a poem. Now, what I suggest you do is you read it aloud to your friends or family and ask them what they think of it. Ask them if there's anything that they, you could do to make the poem better. Poets, like me, sometimes do a few different versions of the poem to get it right. That's okay, you can change it. If you have fun doing it, you can try and write another poem using the same words. Here's another poem I made with the words that I used in the poem about mud, and this uses all of the same words, but this poem is all about how I hate mud. I hate mud. Squelch, sticky shoes, squelch, 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 squelch. I am covered. Brown, runny chunks dripping from my hair. Plop, plip, plop. Dirty, mucky hands. It's in my fingernails. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I hate this stuff. Smeared on me. Splashed on me. Takes forever to wash off me. Mud. Stupid, filthy mud. I'm never diving for the ball again. Especially not when Brody kicks it and it lands dollop right beside my face. So the mud spurts up right into my eye. Blah. Squelch. Squelch, squelch. Ring the doorbell. Mum answers. Look at the state of you. You're not coming into the house like that. Take those clothes off. What? Here? On the doorstep? Mum nods. 
and I begin to strip down to my pants and all I can think is I hate mud. So there you have it. Two poems. One about loving mud, one about hating mud. One that rhymes and one which doesn't. All using the same words. So you can have fun with your words too. Create as many poems as you like. And if you have a finished poem that you really love, then maybe you can ask a grown up and they can post the poem here on this Facebook group and we can see all the different poems that we've created. Okay, that's everything from me. Thanks so much for your time and enjoy writing the poems. I can't wait to read them.